and we have no reception at this time and just being dropped off we have to survive the night we will be going over fire starting shelter making and we'll see how cold it gets tonight First order of business, we need to get our packs up off the ground. Everything's wet and cold and snowy and icy and melting. And so we got this 3 8 inch utility rope. We're gonna craft a toggle and get those packs up on that tree. All right, there's about five feet of rope here. And what I'm gonna do is put two ends like this. Got the frayed ends here. Then, uh, fisherman's knot. There. So it's kind of a double knot right there, but then it can move. So that way, that one can move. Then you do the same thing on this side. Give yourself some slack. You can pull it this way and take up the slack. And now you've connected both sides so it's a loop. Well done. Okay, and then you'll take your rope. Then you just run this through and pull. Now you've got yourself a toggle and you can wrap this end around the tree and this will hold your pack. There are literally thousands of ways to invent different knots for this, but you really don't. It's just that toggle there and then wrap it around the tree. So right there, right on that shoulder strap on both sides. All right, our packs are up off the ground. Now, firewood is gonna be very difficult to find in the middle of the night, even with flashlights. Even if you got a headlamp on and you got two 1000 watt O lights flashing everywhere, it's gonna be difficult because now you gotta carry all that stuff back. You've got maybe one headlamp with you. You wanna get firewood during the day so that you can be prepared for the night. And again, like I said, it'll be a lot easier in a stationary area to build your shelter than it is to go collect firewood. So that's right. what's next. So what tools do we bring? So we got this uh, Grands Force Brook Sweden Axe. So I think this is the, uh, the small one, the small axe. It's small. <laughs> I know they got other types. Uh, Silky, big boy. So this is the saw that uh, we'll be using. My buddy over here, he's got a, a, a big old machete and it's got a, uh, a little saw blade on it too. So that one's awesome. And then we got the cold steel shovel. Uh, this thing's great. If I could only have one piece of uh, bigger equipment like this or a bigger tool set, it would uh, it would definitely include this always. And yeah, because of the uh, Arctic blast that we had roll through here, uh, trees are down just about everywhere. If it's on the forest floor, 
you can use that in dispersed camping for your fire. Next best thing to do is to develop some type of shelter. We're gonna do a minimal dugout and place down logs over the top. This will keep us uh, dry because we've got tarps, we're prepared. So we're gonna put down some tarps underneath after we dig it out, put a tarp over the top of those down logs and then we'll have our fire in front. And so we should stay relatively warm tonight. So, All right, yeah, definitely skipping the dugout idea because it's pouring, it is dumping water. We're under cover of the trees here. There's no uh, widow makers or dead falls, dead men's fall. Uh, so we're, we're good there and we're under cover as far as the trees go but it is soaking wet and cold. So we have got these stakes here. We're gonna kinda set up a leaning, not a lean-to, but a leaning shelter. And the opening is gonna be right at the mouth here is gonna be the, where the fire is. And so we should stay warm. It ain't pretty, but it's a frame. Shelter's almost done. We've got our firewood first. I think it's smart to put a tarp underneath, get our things out and ready for tonight so that it's easy. We just crawl right in, enjoy the night, enjoy the fire. We'll put the tarp over the top, and that'll be that. Still using this survivor cord and if you saw this from previous videos I've been using this forever you just need a little bit and it really does the trick uh, you can use this exactly like any other 550 paracord and there's some goodies on the inside of this you've got fire starter you've got fishing line you've got many other things here this is what we'll be using tonight All right, that's about the best or the most mediocre I'm willing to go on this shelter. Should be fine for tonight. There is some areas of airflow and that I'm probably gonna pay for. I guess we're both gonna pay for that. Yep, congratulations. Uh, uh, but, you know, it should be all right. We'll have a fire, we'll be good. All right, we found a little stream here. So we've got these guys here. These life straws. This one's brand name, Life Straw. There'll be a link in the description for that one. And if you want to click that, it would mean a lot to me because I get affiliate uh, dollars for that. It doesn't cost you anything, but if you click the link and buy one, if this is something you're interested in, then it would help me out. He's got a Sawyer. I'll leave a link for that one too. Those ones are fine. Those ones are great. That's one of the first ones I ever used. I wanted to try out this brand name life straw so let's give it a try yeah so his has a convenient arrow on it so this is the flow that's how you suck that way so you're sure this one uh doesn't but it does have this mouthpiece i assume this is the mouthpiece and i had this tucked away for a while don't have the instructional book or anything like that but i'm confident this is the mouthpiece
So yeah, there's definitely stuff floating around in there. I can see all kinds of little critters and little wormy things. Well, this is this is great water. It tastes amazing. And uh, with this guy here, it it takes a while to suck through. And, and there's such a it's like a really hardcore filter in there. So hoping that takes care of it. Uh, they're branded for this stuff, so it must be fine. Um, but yeah, that tastes delicious. That tastes really, really good. It does, like my buddy said, it tastes like the earth. It tastes earthy, but it tastes really good. All right, really kind of the last order of business tonight is uh, getting the fire going. So what I'm going to do, just for the sake of all things crafty and bushcraft, is uh, do some feather sticks. Uh, create some feather sticks here and it's important to have some kind of bundle or feather sticks or birch bark or something that will catch and hold a flame for I don't know up to 30 seconds or more especially in these conditions where it's just continuously raining and there's snow on the ground you want to find dry wood. Dead standing pine is really the best thing you could get. Uh, again, we had a big freeze, uh, uh, arctic blast, and so these actually already fell on their own. So if they're on the ground, you can, you can take them. All right, so the first thing you want to do in a cold, wet weather situation is find shelter. So you get your shelter, you get your dry sticks and you get under the shelter and with your dry sticks you can then craft some feather sticks here and so I'm shaving off the wet bark the outer layer of this and what I'm gonna do is come down on this after I get more of this bark off Come down with a flat, even stroke. This does take some skill, but the end result is you're going to want to get some paper-like material from your dry wood so that your wood will catch and hold a flame. It's not the most pretty, but I think that'll do the trick. All right. So we got this pile here. This is uh, some pine bark, and so it a type of fat wood because it is definitely infused with that sap. This time of the season, it's draining sap directly out of the tree there. So it's infused with that, and that stuff is highly flammable. And then we got some birch bark on there. That stuff is very flammable as well. Even in the wet, it will hold a flame and uh, some of the shavings from the feather stick. If you're going to come out in a cold, wet day like we decided to do, you better have a fire kit. So it's got the cotton balls, it's got this extra uh, striker, ferro rod, this little convenient guy in here. So this guy will stay lit for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, exactly what you need. So as long as you can get a spark on this guy or some kind of flame, then you'll be able to uh, get your fire going. Some of the greatest survivalists in history have said I would rather have a pocket full of Bix or lighters than a ferro rod and fire starter. And in this situation, cold, wet, snow on the ground, ice, raining, I would agree.
just want to go ahead and keep this stick. Yeah. Stick. Totally. Don't want to have to look for a weenie stick in the dark. So this, right here, the whole reason and expectation. Roasting sausage by the fire. Spending time in the wilderness, keeping your mind centered and occupied on the now and letting the cares and the worries of tomorrow and the things of the past slip away. Yeah, so it's about 8.30 at night. Got dark at 5.30. We're just getting dumped on out here. I'm surprised the fire is still lit. Yeah, we found some dry wood, so that's probably why. But that fire took some doing, and it's sustaining so far. And the forecast says it's supposed to rain all night, and all day tomorrow, there's a, a, a very big chance that that's going to happen. And from the way it looks, that's, that's what's happening. But we're staying dry under our shelter here. And sunrise is at approximately 7.40 a.m. So we've got darkness now for almost 12 hours. And the way it looks, the logs we collected are only going to last another four hours. So we'll see what happens tonight. It's about 9.42 p.m. It's as black as darkness out here. The fire is, uh, it's got some legs on it still probably until 1, it's supposed to get up to 44 degrees, around 11, right now it's 36 degrees, and we're both relatively warm. Yeah, nothing left to do but lean back and enjoy the ride. It's about 6.20 a.m., sunrise is about 7.40 and usually you can see a little bit of light through daylight, but there's nothing. It's just very black, and it's been raining all night long. Temperature was supposed to get up to 44, but it seemed to maintain 36 all night. Eight thirty. And can actually see something, can see everything. It was so dark last night, I didn't think I would see daylight again. But it's still raining, and it's still cold. I think here in a few minutes, I'm going to get up, put on these wet boots, start moving around a little bit because that will warm me up even with these wet boots and see what other crafty things we can get into. Yeah, so it's about 9.40. We're getting everything packed up. We're going to hike on out of here to our pickup spot, but everything turned out well. A few things though, it was very cold for one, it was very wet for two, and for three, our fire went out and we are not going to attempt to try to get this thing going again. Everything's just waterlogged and washed out. 
All right, so was this survival? Was this campcraft? Was this dispersed camping? I'd say yeah, right in the middle. All of those things. Campcraft, because we did craft some things. And survival, it got very, very cold and wet and we were without fire. So if you're interested in this and plan on doing something around these same lines and haven't done it, I encourage you, do it. Get out there and have some fun. But be safe, be prepared, and know your limitations. We found a posted target shooting area. I don't know who's dumber. The person with the apple or? Yeah, the person with the apple is. That's for sure. You ready? Yep. That's weird. Always be prepared. Eye pro, ear pro. You never know when you'll come across the target area.